Hey friends, Henry from Adventure Air here, and uh, today we're going to talk about um, the most common accidents and um, the causes of those accidents on takeoff and landing. Of course, takeoff and landing are where the majority of accidents happen, so we're going to cover the, the most common things that people do on takeoff and landing that can cause a problem and how to fix them. So let's go try it. All right, guys, so let's go out here and uh, see if we can make some mistakes. <laughs> Just one for three traffic at two o'clock and three miles southwest on climbing out of uh, 2200. All right, first mistake stuff. people make is they don't put it into flight mode. They leave it in brake mode. You can actually uh, pre-rotate with it in brake mode and your stick pressure is going to be very heavy. All right, flight mode we go to. Then I'm going to increase the throttle to just under 2,000 RPM. With my right thumb, I'm going to push down on the pre-road button. I'm going to hold it down. Adding a little bit of power. That's the second thing people do. They don't add enough power as the rotor is spinning up, and they let the engine bog down, and it dies. That's the second mistake. Next thing is pulling the stick back under 200 RPM. So we're going to go to 200. Four steps, thumb off the button, stick back, release the brakes, add power. Another problem they do is uh, they're not on the center line, they're just wobbling all over the place. When we get to 300 RPM, the nose is going to come up off the ground. Another mistake, they don't put in enough right pedal. So if they don't put it in right pedal, I'll show you what happens. As soon as you're off the ground, it's going to roll like this. So you've got to push that right pedal in to keep going straight. It's a lot of power on these 915 engines, so you'll see what happens when I take my foot off the pedal. It yaws to the left. You've got to add right pedal. Now, there's a lot of forward stick pressure. I'm going to show you. If I let the thing go, see how we dive? All right, you have to add trim by pulling down on the hat. The trim is zero right now. On a Cavalon, you've got to pump it up to about six. So not adding enough trim pressure. At six, I can actually let everything go. Golf enable right for option number two, follow Cessna short final, runway two six right, clear for the option. Turning right, cross one, clear for the option two six right, two follow call. Anytime you're adding a lot of power, the torque on this 915 engine pulls the nose to the left. So you can take my foot off. Look at that. See how we roll left? So you have to have, when you have a lot of power in, a lot of right pedal to keep us straight. As soon as I back power off like this, now see, I don't have to put any right pedal in anymore. It flies pretty straight. But anytime I add power, that nose is going to pull to the left. Two pop golf, number one. Two pop golf. Now, conversely, if I take power off quickly, watch what the nose does. The numbers runway two six right. It rolls to the right. Okay. That's especially important on landing, because as we're coming into land, all of a sudden people are coming to the, at the runway and they jerk that power off quick. That nose pulls right. You have to give a little left pedal to straighten it out. All right, he called us. We are clear for the option on 26 right, number one. We're turning uh, base right now. On the base, I'm starting to come off the power a little bit because we want to go down. If you keep a lot of power up turning base, you're going to get to the runway super high. How much power do you pull off? Meh, I don't know. On a Cavalon, again, maybe 3,000 RPM, 3,200. That's about right. All of these maneuvers and things I'm talking to you about are relating to the auto gyro Cavalon, by the way. Your gyroplane may be different in its speeds and its engine RPM and its rotor speed. So whatever your operating manual says to do, that's what you should go for on your machine. All right, we're lining up on the runway here. I'm going to show you the two most important things, I think, in coming into the ground. I want to be at least 60 to 65 miles an hour. We're doing 77 now, so that's plenty fast. And I want to be straight. I don't want to come in like this. I don't want to come in like that. I want to be perfectly straight as I come in. Coming to the close to the ground, pulling the nose up. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting down here. And then I'm just going to pull the nose up and just like set those wheels on the ground. 
keeping the nose off the ground as long as I can so that all I can't do it any longer will almost come to a full stop. Then the nose sets down. All right, we're going to take back off again. Here's another thing people do too much. Boom, they get that nose way up here like this, way high, okay? Keep the nose close to the ground. If your nose is up too high, you have a tendency to roll over. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your nose close to the ground, adding power and keeping the nose down. If I don't do that, the nose is just going to pitch up like this, and then you're going to get in trouble. So getting that nose too high on takeoff, as soon as you're off the ground, you're pushing forward on the stick to keep the nose down close to the ground. All right, we're going to climb out. Our best climb on this guy is around eh, 60 knots, 65. So we're going to be somewhere in that ballpark, right about there. That's our best climb. Again, we're full power now, so a lot of right pedal again. Left stick, right pedal is the magic uh, phrase there. We're gonna turn crosswind now. So right crosswind, I check my right, nobody there, here we go. Even on the turn, I'm giving right pedal. If I let that, because again, I got almost full power going. If I let that pedal go, watch, whoa, now we're sliding sideways. See, see the string. As Soon as I put the right pedal in, whoop, straightens us back out. So, an, on the 915 engine, an overabundance of right pedal. You got a really deep pop golf runway, two six right cleared for the option. Clear for the option, two six right, two pop golf. A lot of right pedal with the 915 engine. All right, turning onto the downwind at 1,400 feet here at Chino in beautiful Southern California. Come out and see me sometime. <laughs> Quit talking so much, Jeremy. <laughs> I just can't contain myself. <laughs> All right, we're at 1,400 feet, which is pattern altitude. We're on the downwind. Let's see what else happens here. Um, every once in a while, I'm glancing over my engine instruments. I'm checking fuel pressure. It's good. My oil temperature, oil pressure, and water temperature are all good as well. Whoops, I've climbed up 100 feet. I was at 14, now I'm at 1,500, so I'm going to back the power down just a smidge. For the Cavalons, I found out about 4,500 RPM is a good straight and level flight. If I'm much under that, we're going to go down. Much over that, we're going to go up. Turning onto the base, what do we do? We're going to come off the power a little bit. Clearing my base turn. The tower has already cleared us for the option. What does that mean, cleared for the option? What is an option? The option means we can do pretty much whatever we want to do. If he says clear for landing only, we have to land and get off the runway. If he says option, we have the option of getting off the runway, doing a stop and go, doing a touch and go, flying low down the runway, pretty much whatever we want. So. Him giving us the option to do whatever we want is the, uh, the most generous thing the tower guy can do. All right, I'll show you another thing, problem that people do. Coming into the, to the landing. We're coming in, we're looking good. We're about uh, 500 feet off the ground. I'm gonna come down. And this looks good. We're, gonna, we're just gonna flare it out right here. We're just gonna stop all of our motion. Oh my gosh. Our airspeed drops down really low, and then now we're in stuck, and so we have to get the nose down. You do not want to flare too high. I like coming down to the runway at about 60 miles an hour. Once I'm down here, you can either cut the power, come in and put those back tires on the ground again, slow it down, slow it down. Keep that nose off the ground as long as I can. Touch down. But I add power. If I keep the stick back, look what happens. We start backing up. We don't want to do that either. Our rotor speed is still 300, so I can keep the stick back. This is like the top fly runway heading runway 26 left at Papa clear for takeoff. A lot of right pedal right now. My nose is way too high right here. Way too high. Push it down. Get it down. Right there. Close to the ground. Adding power, keeping my nose down. Left stick, right pedal. Up we go.
again, I still have a lot of right pedal in because our power is full power. What? All right, clearing my crosswind turn, turning crosswind. Golf runway 26 right, clear for the option. Clear for the option, 26 right to Papa Golf. All my temperatures and pressures are looking good on my panel. Turning on to the downwind, crossing 1300 for 1400. Having a, like a car, about a thousand foot per minute, per minute climb rate. There's 14, back the power off. 24500, which is a good cruise level. And we stay right at 1400. Wind 27011. Trim is very important. I like to trim this thing so I can actually let everything go and we can just fly without our hands on it. 1,400 feet, about 70 miles an hour, 65 knots, and I haven't touched anything. If you're not trimmed properly, uh, get trimmed. So you don't want to have a lot of forward pressure on that stick. You don't want to be pulling it back or pushing it forward. You just want to be able to fly with one finger. If you can just fly with one finger, you know that the trim is set properly, okay? All right. Let's turn our base again. Clearing my base, turning base. What do we do on the base, you guys remember? Yeah, pull the power back a little bit. Let's get on down. Down we go. Squaring my base. The tower likes nice square turns to downwind base and final, no cheating and kind of curving it in. My final's looking clear. He has cleared us. He's watching out for us, but I like to kind of look around myself. Just make sure that we don't have any yahoos out here trying to mess with us. Turning on to final. Our speed is good. Our descent is good. We're lining up on the runway. Here's another thing that people do. They tend to not be lined up on the runway. Let me show you. They kind of line up on the right side here for some reason. And I say, are you straight? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm straight, I'm straight. So what happens is when they get down at the last second, they got to do this crazy maneuver to get on the center line. So they get down here and they realize, oh, I'm not straight. So then they have to do this, they get over, and then they swing it back. And it's just adding a lot of trouble and, and uh, stress when you're trying to land, you know? So down to the runway. Now here, even this I'm flared too high. Here I'm at like 15 feet. If I do this and slow way down, you're going to fall from 15 feet. You don't want to drop from 15 feet. So get down close to the ground. Learn where that one foot off the ground level is, which is about right here, and just be able to fly down at one foot. When you decide you want to land, you can slowly come off the power, touch those back wheels down onto the ground, keep the nose off again as long as you can until that thing almost stops, set the wheel down. We're going to add power to keep going. We're still at 300 RPM, so I don't have to worry about the stick being back. All right, another thing people do is they'll start drifting this way. You know, to, to, and then what they do is they'll try to correct it with the stick by pulling the stick right. But what does that do? That just lifts your left tire off the ground, keeps the right one on the ground. You don't want to do this either. You want to get left stick, right pedal, and stay on the center line. Left stick, right pedal, left stick, right pedal. Climb back out. And guys, if you're ever in the Southern California area, um, I'd love to fly with you. Come out here, um, I'll run all through this stuff with you personally, and uh, we'll get you signed off on the, uh, on the gyro. This thing is the funnest thing I've ever flown, it really is. We're open pretty much seven days a week. I've got uh, four instructors that work for me, and we can always uh, accommodate you. We have some uh, inexpensive accommodations here if you need a place to stay. And uh, we are the busiest gyro training center in the country. So come out here and play with us. 1,400 feet, I'm gonna back that power off. To what? About 4,500 RPM again, right about there, straight and level. A lot of times when you're flying to, you're gonna hear the sound of the engine. What sound is that hum, hum is making? 
if you hear it like this, and it's really low, you know you're gonna start going down. If it's like this, and way too high, you're gonna be climbing. So you'll learn what 4,500 is without even having to look at it. All right, we're at the power line, so we're turning our crosswind. That's what the tower asks us to do. Now, here's another trick. I'm watching this Avion on the runway. He's pulling, coming in there. I don't know how long he's gonna take, but so you don't wanna crowd him. But the great thing about the gyro is if we do turn on to final and we're crowding the guy, we pull that nose up, add a little power, we can pretty much just hover here for a minute. Delta Ground Point 6, welcome back. Let's just sit here for a minute and wait. Got a little bit of a headwind, so we're actually just kind of hanging out here. Where's that avion? Okay, he's turning off, so let's go again. Nose down, get our airspeed back. Got 3025. Checking my trim, looking pretty happy. I can even do a turn without touching it. Straighten it up one finger. Don't be gripping the stick too, uh, too hard. I see people over here white knuckling the stick just like, oh my God, I gotta hold this thing so tight, you know? Once you trim it up, I, it's best just to keep loose. Keep loose, lightly hold the stick, make little corrections on everything that you're doing. You don't need to be like death gripping this thing. It'll do pretty much whatever you want it to, to do uh, once you get in the habit of what, what the machine will do for you. Always glancing up at my super uh, my my super expensive wind indicator, the Scotch tape and the string up there. You know, and if I'm a little off, I'm gonna make adjustments with it. If I see it flying like this, I know I'm flying sideways to the right. It's like this, I'm flying to the left. So keep the string in the middle. A lot of people get impatient too. They want to slam this thing onto the ground. Why not get down and get as slow as you can before you touch the back wheels on the ground? The slower you land this thing, the easier it is to control it. If you're coming in and smacking it down at 70 or 80 miles an hour, then you got to contend with all this speed. Come in nice and slow. Again, the minimum I say is about 60, but once you get down to close to the ground, you can bleed off your airspeed until you're flying really slow. Let's see how slow we can fly. All right, down to the runway, down to a foot. All right, we're down in here. Come back on the stick. I'm gonna keep the wheels off the ground until it just can't fly anymore. Slow, 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 slow. That was about 25 miles an hour, okay? Wheel touches. We're gonna full stop now, so what do I do? Instead of backing up, stick forward. Rotor brake on brake. Pump it up by pulling down on the hat. On this Cavalon, I'm gonna pump it up to about eight. What that eight does is it locks that stick forward. I can actually let it go now. I'm checking my wind. My wind is pretty much down the runway. So I wanna keep the stick into the wind. This is called rotor management. We're gonna exit on the Delta intersection up here is probably what the tower is gonna to ask me to do. As I make my turn onto Delta, I do it nice and slow. No fast turning. This is another one of your accidents. People slam it on the ground, try to make a fast turn off, and then they end up like a wheelbarrow, whoop, and they tip it over. So look at this, nice and slow off the runway. Jared, copy, see Bob Golf, ground point six, shoot. Ground point six, yep. Little shout out to Jimmy Buffett. That's a great last. I grew up in Florida, I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. So sorry to hear of his passing. Very sad. Oof. Anyway, okay, so um, we were showing you some things that you can do to uh, eliminate uh, some problems that a lot of people have on takeoff and landings. So remember, keep that rotor speed up to at least 200. This is on a Cavalon before you pull the stick back. Otherwise, you're going to have some issues. You could uh, chop your tail and chop your prop back there. So make sure that you follow the steps that I said. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything that I did or you want more explanation, um, please leave us a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that way I can keep putting these videos out uh, and trying to uh, help you guys. Also, if you're ever in the Los Angeles area, please come out and see me. I'd love to fly with you and uh, show you how easy it is to fly these gyroplanes. I can teach anyone, except for that fly that just landed on me. <laughs> so come out and see me in Chino. Otherwise, we will see ya.